Now I want to make a few observations here and then we'll do an example based on these observations. Sn, the sum of the first n terms of any series, arithmetic, geometric, it doesn't matter, is t1 plus t2 plus t3 up as far as tn. The second last term is tn minus 1. If we want the sum of the first n minus 1 terms, we just write t1 plus t2 plus t3, but the last term is going to be tn minus 1. Now look what happens when we subtract these two equations. So I take the left hand side of the top equation, subtract the left hand side of the bottom equation, we get sn minus sn minus 1. Now subtract the right hand side of the take the right hand side of the top equation, subtract the right hand side of the bottom equation from it. This is a perfectly allowable operation because we're doing the same thing to both sides of the top equation. We're subtracting two equal things from the top equation. What happens is we end up getting tn. Everything cancels out and we end up with just tn minus zero if you like. You can imagine a zero here. So the top, this expression minus this expression just leaves us with tn. So this is an important relation. Now I want to talk about a specific type of series, that is an arithmetic series. Tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. So that was covered in the very first video on this series. So if Tn is given by this, it means that Tn minus 1, the n minus first term, which is the term previous to Tn, is got by replacing n with n minus 1. So we'd have n minus 1 minus 1, which is n minus 2. So just plug n minus 1 in for n and subtract 1. Now, I've just moved everything down here. I multiply d into n minus 1 to get n d minus d, and d is multiplied into n minus 2 here to get n d minus 2 d. The next thing I want to do is subtract these two equations. So I take the top equation, or the left hand side of the top equation, subtract the left hand side of the bottom equation. And that equals the right hand side of the top equation minus the right hand side of the bottom equation. These will cancel out, so will these. And we will have minus d minus minus 2d, that's plus 2d, which is d. So here's another very important fact. The nth term minus the nth minus first term is a constant. d is a constant. It's just a number. See, the n terms cancelled out, so there's no n involved. It doesn't vary, in other words. Of course, I needn't really have proven this second r result. You know this from the very first video on the playlist. If you take any term in an arithmetic series, say t7, the seven term, and subtract the previous term, t6, well, you just get a constant, d. And it doesn't matter what n is. If n was, say, 12, subtract the previous term, 11, you'll get a constant, d. So I didn't really need to show you that in too much detail, more generally, because you know that from earlier videos. So now I'm going to use these two results in answering this question here. We're given that the first, the sum of the first n terms of a series is given by sn equals n squared log to the base e of 3. I'm going to write log to the base e of 3 as ln of 3. This is often used for log to the base e of 3. Um, ln of 3 is just a number. ln of 3 is constant. It's just a number. We could work it out as a, as a decimal, but there's no point. We can just leave it like this. Um, find the nth term and prove that the series is arithmetic. Well, to get the nth term, we just use the fact that the nth term is sn minus sn minus 1. Just use this result. sn is n squared ln of 3 minus sn minus 1. Well, we have the formula for sn, we just plug n minus 1 in for n. We have to bracket it and square it here, and it's multiplied by ln of 3. Uh, we can take ln of 3 out of all of this, actually. And inside we'll have n squared, that's this n squared here. And then we have a minus sign, bracket, and we have to square this out. That'll give n squared minus 2n plus 1. 
So this is ln3 times n squared minus n squared is 0. And then we have minus minus 2n or plus 2n. Then the minus plus 1 gives minus 1. Um, I'm going to write this 2n minus 1 in front of ln of 3. Because the 2n minus 1 is not part of the argument of this ln function. The argument of this ln function is 3. So that's important not to avoid any, in order to avoid confusion, bring it to the front. You see ln3, all of ln3, whatever it is, is multiplied by this. So that's Tn. Now, we want to prove that this series is arithmetic. So we just use the second result here to prove that. We get Tn minus Tn minus 1, and we should get a constant, D. And that, that constant will be the difference between consecutive terms. So let's do that. Uh, Tn is 2n minus 1 multiplied by ln of 3. And then we subtract Tn minus 1. Well, Tn minus 1 is got from this by replacing n with n minus 1. So we'll have 2 times n minus 1. Well, that's 2n minus 2. And then we have a minus 1. So we'll have 2n minus 2 minus 1 or 2n minus 3. Now, um, we have a plus 2n ln3, and we'll have a minus 2n ln3. So these 2n's will cancel out. And we're left with minus 1 ln3 minus minus 3 ln3. So that's minus ln3 plus 3 ln3. That's minus 1 plus 3, or 2 ln3. And that's a constant. It doesn't involve n. You see the term, the n's disappear. So it doesn't matter what n is. If we take any term and subtract the previous term, we get we get the number 2 ln3. So that proves that Tn is arithmetic. Therefore, Tn is arithmetic. So we have Tn. Let's write down a couple of terms. Let's write down the first term, T1. To get t1, we just plug 1 in for n. So we'll have 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 times ln3. So the first term is ln3. To get the next term, we plug 2 in for n. 2 twos are 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So we get 3 ln3. Um, the next term is got by plugging 3 in. But we know what the difference is now. So we could actually just get it from the difference. So 3 ln3 minus 1 ln3 is 2 ln3. Add 2 ln3 onto this, and we get 5 ln3. Add 2 ln3 onto this, and we get 7 ln3. So D was 2 ln3. Um, so that's our series. Just as a quick check here. Well, it's not much of a check. I, I just, I, I'm just going to work out S3, some of the first three terms. S3 is ln3 plus 3 ln3 plus 5 ln3. That's 1 and 3 is 4 and 5 is 9. It's 9 times ln3. And that's just adding the first three terms. But now I'm going to use our formula for S3. And I'll plug 3 in here. 3 squared is 9. 9 times ln3. Yep, checks out. In part 2, we want to find out how many of the terms of this series are less than 12 ln of 27. Well, let's look at 12 ln of 27. 27 can be written as 3 to the power of 3. And then we can use one of our rules for logs that says we can multiply the power down by what's in front. So we get 36 ln 3. Um, we want to see how many terms do, of this series do we need to take. Um, how many terms are less than this? Well, obviously, these all these ones are less. The first four are less than it. The ninth term is going to be 9 ln3, um, and so on. Not the ninth term, but the fifth term, sorry. The sixth term is going to be 11 ln of 3. And, you know, you could just keep counting them up. Of course, we could put the nth term equal to 36 ln3. That doesn't mean that this is one of the terms of, of the series. As a matter of fact, it's not, because the series has odd numbers in it. 36 is an even number. But let's see. 
tn is is 2n minus 1 times ln of 3. So that means that 2n minus 1 is equal to 36. So n is equal to 37 divided by 2. So we could say the 18.5th term is 36, which means that 18 terms are less than than 12 ln 27 or 36 ln 3, same thing. Of course, there's no such thing as the 18.5th term. n has to be a positive integer or natural number. But if we if we get t18, you'll see what what happens. If we get the 18th term, just plug 18 in there, we get 2 times 18. It's 36 minus 1 is 35. We get 35 ln 3. And that's less than 36 ln 3. So... There are 18 terms that are less than 36 ln 3.